Hey folks, Diana J. Brody here from NLE Academy, and today we're talking about markers and marker bins, Premier versus Avid. Let's do it. Okay, markers and markers bins. This is probably pretty self-evident. Most people really already know this, but there are slight differences between Premier and Avid with markers. Here I am in Premier. Let's say right here I wanted to put a marker because let's say something in this graphic is incorrect. I can just put my playhead here. I can hit marker. I hit it once. This comes up. I can double click in here, right? Or I could hit it once, twice. And if on the second tap, it pops that window up for me. No need to click if I know I want to write in it right away. One of the things about Premiere's markers that I uh, uh, that I find interesting is uh, name right here, name, right? I never use it. I never use it. But you could, I could call it like graphics problems, right? And then... Uh, and then the name of that will be graphics problems all the way down the line every time I have a graphics problem. But I, I almost never use the name. I default right to the comments, right? So I'll be like, fix stage three to be, you know, 32 to 67. I don't know. Uh, but there you go. Just, just as a random thing. Now I can change the marker color right here, right? I can say, okay, I want that to be blue. I want every time I have a graphics problem, or let's say purple, because that's really what I make my graphics anyway. Let's say every time I have a graphics problem, I'll just label it purple. And so all I can look at my timeline and all the purple markers I know are problems with graphics that need to be fixed. You can make it a comment marker, which is what this is. You can make it a chapter marker if you're making DVDs, which, you know, doesn't really happen that much anymore. But when it did happen, when I was making a lot of DVDs, that was sure very useful. Then you could also make it a segmentation marker. You could make it a web link if you wanted. There's a lot of different things that you can do here, but most people just use pretty much the defaults right there, right? And so... Uh, and so I say, okay, and there it is. There's my purple marker over my purple graphic. And, and look over here, fix stage three to be 32 through 67. I can see that because I have my overlays enabled. So in order to see it here, you need to have overlays enabled. Right over here at this wrench, if I click on this wrench and I go down all the way to the bottom, to overlays and overlay settings. I can go to overlay settings and say custom overlay. Whoops, that didn't, that, that didn't work as well as I had hoped. Uh, I can come over here to this wrench once again. Here we go, overlay settings. Let's go to overlay settings. Now I'll click settings because that's the correct thing to do. And it calls up this dialog box, right? Now I can say I could have this be at the top or the left or the right. You can program all of these. You can program how many tracks you want to see it on. You can program the alignment. You can program whether you want to see markers or, or it doesn't even have to deal with markers, right? I could just say source time code and say, okay, then look, now my source time code is an overlay. That's a little bit much for me, but maybe you like it. I'm coming back down to settings and I'm gonna put it back. But just know that you've got other, you could say sip, uh, sequence clip name. You can say file name, project name, sound time code. You've got a lot of choices here to choose from. And uh, you can also, uh, you can also um, save this as a preset, right? So I can come, I can come over to here and say save preset and call it like markers bottom, right? Cause it's gonna be markers at the bottom. Say save, say okay. Now here it is back again, markers at the bottom. When I come over here to the wrench and I go to overlay settings, it will give me choices. Here are different settings that I've used for my overlays, right? And that is really the only way to see your marker text on the screen in the timeline. Your other option is to come over to window, to go over to markers, which I have over here out already. And let me pull it over here and throw it into the side right here. So if I'm clicked here, uh, and I want to see my, I want to see my markers. There we go. If I'm clicked over here, 
and I want to see my markers, uh, I need to be clicked on, if I'm clicked on this window, there are no markers, right? Now this window is all nice and squished. Let's pull them out so it's nice and even. But if I'm clicked over here on the timeline side, now my markers come up, right? There's my marker. Here are all the markers that I have here. Here are two markers, Envato and Vado. Those are music cues that I used from Envato that I needed to send to YouTube to tell YouTube that I in fact do own the rights. So I marked them right there. And, and you see on the, along the very, very side of them, those are just the default green and the purple marker that we just set right there is right there. And you see, fixed stage between blah, blah, blah. Now, if I had named it, right, if I had put a name in there, let's say I name it, you know, uh, 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 Frank Zappa. This is a favorite name I like to put on things. Frank Zappa right there, and I say, okay. Now, Frank Zappa shows up in name, but it's really hard to see. I don't find having named it uh, to be a very helpful use case. But just so you know, right, if I click here on this marker, it, it pops me right over here. And of course, I, I highlighted this music track bright red so I could see it really quickly because it was called out by YouTube as being copyrighted material, even though I own the copyright. So here it is. Now, normally I would also match that red for heads up. And now if you notice, it turned red there and it turned red right there. So uh, if I wanna see this clip, I can go here. If I wanna see this, I can click right on it. It takes me right to the marker. Whoops, I forgot. Hold the presses. Here we go. I forgot about span markers. People love them. I don't use them that much. Every now and again, I do, but people love them. And this is how you do it in Premiere. So I'm going to add a marker here. By the way, I was adding a marker before by hitting the M key, M for marker in Premiere. I hit the M key and it adds a marker. Uh, if I want to add a, just a marker, right? Now I just add a marker. There's that marker right there. I just added it. And so just by clicking M, you can also, by the way, right click and say add marker, right? That's another way you can add a marker. Uh, but so here's my marker right here. Now, if I can pick it up and move it, I can pick it up and move it in Premiere. If I don't like where it is and I'm like, ooh, I meant this marker to be right there instead, I can just click, drag, hold and move it around till it is where I want it to be. So it's right there. There's my marker. Let's say I wanted I want to justify both of these clips. I'm gonna put this marker at the beginning of this clip. Notice how it snapped to the cut point because I have the over here the little magnet enabled. Uh, so uh, if I want to justify this whole area with a marker, uh, I can't just pick it up and drag it to to make it a span marker. What I do is I hold down Option. I hold down Option. Then I click and I open it up, boom, there it is. Now I've justified that whole thing. Then if I double click it, I can of course name it, which you know, I don't generally care to do. So I'm gonna hit tab and I'm gonna say, uh, replace all of this. And I'm gonna recolor the marker and make it red and say, okay, boom, replace all of this. Now I can see it really easily. I can see it here and I can see it up there. Then. Also, if I come up here to my uh, to my markers bin, right? Let's go grab the markers bin again and tab that in there. So if I come up here to my markers bin, I can see on this marker right here, uh, notice how the in on this marker, the in and the out, same frame, 72808, 72808. But on the span marker, 73416 to 73910. There you go. And I can use that and I can click to it just like I click to any other marker by just clicking on the face of it. That's how you do span markers as well. But I think we all know that things work in Avid a little differently, including span markers. Come with me. Welcome to the Avid side. Here we go, markers. Okay, it's not natively on the M key. The M key is a trim tool function. If you're gonna map over using your keyboard shortcuts, right? You go into file, you go to settings, you go to user, you double click on your keyboard, and then, whoops, 
you hide it in your dock really quickly for no reason. And then you hit command three, call up your command palette. You go to more. Here are all your color markers that you have available to you. Look at all these colors. You can now, using a button to button reassignment, map them on your keyboard. I've put it right here on my tab key, right here on my tab key. Uh, but you do you. If you're gonna put it on the M key so it matches Premiere, then you're gonna wanna map these four buttons somewhere else all together as a group. Put them up here, F1 through F4. Put them up here, you know, five, six, seven, eight, like wherever, just move them as a group. These four buttons, if you're gonna map a marker to the M key. So here we go. Let's get all about it. I'm here in Avid. We have our playhead where I wanna put my marker. In Avid, it really makes a difference what selectors are up, right? So here I've got V4 lit up. There's a blank track right there on V4. There's blank up there. I like to put my markers on a blank track. You can also put them on a clip, doesn't matter. Does not matter. Uh, so let's put a marker. I'm gonna hit the tab key, but look, they also give you a marker right here. I lost my ability to do a zoom. Here we go. There we go. Look, they give it to you right there uh, on on your windows. They should give it to you one on each window. So you can put you can put markers on source clips as well, which I didn't show you in Premiere, but you know, works the same. Same functionality both ways. So here we go. Let me do this again. I'm gonna add a marker right here on this blank track. So I've got B4 lit up. I got nothing else lit up because I don't want it to go on a clip in this instance. I want it to go on this blank track. So I'm gonna hit the marker button, which for me, as we know, is on tab. But it's also right there, let's not forget. So if you come up here, you've got a lot of information. So right there, color is red. We can change that color here, right? We could make a green. I like to do red markers and then turn them green as I go sometimes, depending on the client and depending on what I'm doing. But this pops up and you can change what track it's on. If you did mean it to put, put it on the clip on V3, watch what happens when I hit V3 and go, okay. Right, oh, there was a V3 was also blank. So let's do this, let's go back to it and this gives me an opportunity to show you. If I did and I clicked it and it's not right and I want to fix it, come up here, you see it right here in the record monitor, the timeline monitor, right? If I click right on it with my mouse, it pops back up, here it is. Now I can change the track to V2. I can change the color to magenta. I can type in here and say, hey, what's up folks? And hit okay. Now it's a magenta marker. It's right there. When I put my playhead on it, I see it right here. Just like we turned on in the overlays in Premiere. Hey, what's up folks? Let's say I want to change this and I wanna go back to my blank track. Let's put it on the topmost track and say, okay, I like to do that. I like to keep a blank track at the top of Avid and keep all my markers for comments uh, and, and notes and all of that, all on that blank track up there. It works out really nicely for me. It's easy to see, uh, but here we go. Now I've got this. Now from here, you've got this fast menu in the bottom, right? This fast menu. Just, Disable edit marker dialog when adding. Disable edit dialog while playing. Disable edit marker dialog box always. So that's this box right here. So if you don't want this box, if you've got a lot of markers and you're just like putting markers, putting markers, you don't want to type in the box, right? Because if you noticed, if you noticed, let's add another marker. I'm going to put a marker right here. When I add the marker, boom, that box pops right up automatically. You can disable that down here. Also, you can get to your markers bin from here. If you're like, okay, I'm on this marker and I'm typing this in, Denny looks confused. That's my neighbor, Denny. And say, okay, here it is in red. Denny looks confused. Now let's say I'm like, I wanna get to my markers bin, but I don't wanna come all the way up to the tools menu. Click on it, go all the way down to markers. Oh, and then here's my markers bin. No, that took way too long. Here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna click right here. 
I'm gonna click markers, there it is. Calls it right up, calls your markers bin right up. Now I'm gonna tab this marker into here, into this uh, this bin container. So you can, you can have your bins, normally of course my bins are on the left hand side, but on the right hand side in this space, I keep my markers right there because you can tab that in. We're gonna go over bins and bin containers in another video, that's a whole other thing. But for right now, here's my markers bin. And just like in Premiere, if I, if I click on one, it's not a single click, I gotta double click. If I double click on one, notice that this jumped to it. If I double click on the other, notice that that jumped to it, right? And in here, I can even, and I like to move comments all the way over to here. You can change, by the way, uh, uh, what, um, what columns are in your markers bin by right clicking and saying, uh, and saying choose columns. And then I can say select all none. And all I want is really the, uh, I like the icon. Let's, uh, let's, I like the numbers. Let's do uh, comments and then, uh, and then TC and say, okay. And then look, so it's much easier to look at that way, but you can have as much information as you want. You do you. And so here we go. Now I can type right in there, Denny, is confused, right? And I can change it right from the markers bin the same way you can do that in Premiere, right? I could have just clicked right in that markers bin window in the little marker window and just bloop, changed it right in that bin level. So that is just basic markers. Now let's do spanned markers. What if you want to do span markers? And by the way, I realize I didn't go over all this stuff, but you can, you can globally Right? If I want to change both of these, I can click here and globally say change track and choose a different track or change color and make them both be a different color. I can use this fast menu to import markers. We're going to get to that in another lesson. We're going to get to importing markers in another lesson because that's going to become very, very uh, important when we're talking about frame IO. So keep this Keep this top of mind because we're coming back to it. And then I can export my markers so that I can send all the markers that are in the thing in the in the timeline to my producer. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of different stuff you can do here. You can also dis disable that same stuff from the pop-up box. You can disable all that same stuff here. But anyway, let's do span markers now, okay? Really quickly. So just to review, right? There, if I click right on the face of the marker, this pops up. I can uh, go, uh, my, my marker's bin's already open, so it's disabled the little thing that says to open the marker's bin because my marker's bin's already open. But if you forget uh, that you can open your marker's bin and it's closed from right here, you can always come up to tools and go down to markers. I, of course, have the markers bin mapped to one key, as is a surprise to absolutely no one. So, okay, here we go. Span markers in Avid work a little bit differently. Instead of just going to the marker, holding down an option, and sliding it open, and by the way, I should mention, once you have a marker placed in Avid, it's placed. Unlike Premiere, where you can pick the marker up and slide it left and right and move it up and down the timeline, depending on where you want it, you cannot do that in Avid. No, sir. Where it is is where it is. And if you want to move it, you would have to go here, click on that, Command C to copy, say OK. Then if I wanted to move that here instead, I add a marker, I go Command V to paste, and I say OK. And now I've moved that marker to over there. And I can come back over here and I can delete the marker by hitting delete, which by the way, you can delete a marker in Premiere the same way by clicking on it, you know, click being on the marker and hitting delete or in Premiere right clicking and deleting it anyway and saying clear markers. So at any rate, here we go span markers. In Avid, span markers work a little bit differently. Click, uh, if I wanna put a span marker, let's say from right there, uh, let's say from right here, from right here, to right there, I want a span marker. I need to put an in and an out set, an in and an out set. Then you see that marker right there. I'm gonna hold down option, hold down option, and I'm gonna click that marker. And now 
I will have a spanned marker. If you notice, start time is 3.02, end time is 5.28. And then I'm going to type in here, uh, you know, a uh, glorious day out today. Boom. And say OK. Now I've got a span marker. You know it's a span marker because you see that instead of, right, just that. So if I'm here and I'm on I'm on the beginning of my span marker, it will show me it will show me the text and it shows me that symbol telling me it's a spanned marker. And then if you follow the bouncing ball all the way down to here, you can see the spanned marker right here at the bottom, at the bottom, at the time code at the bottom. Right? So on your bottom time code or if you're the kind of person who has your time code in your in the middle, because you like it visually to split the video from the audio. I know a lot of people like that. Uh, then you will see that in the middle of, of, your, uh, of your timeline. But for right here, it's down here. And, uh, uh, and that's your span marker. And excuse me, and just like in Premiere, if I hit an in and an out and an X, now uh, my span marker does not self-correct for that extraction, right? I'm gonna hit X to extract, and it's extracted all that, but my span marker's the same. But unlike in Premiere, I cannot pick one end up and fix it. Like in Premiere, you can pick up one end and fix it. And uh, I, I, I thought you could, uh, I thought you could maybe come in here and, and fix the end time code here, but you can't. So you, once you've extracted something, you, your best bet is to say, is to delete this, add your in and your out, and then option, click your marker, and then type in it, and then say okay, and then there is your spanned marker again down there. So you just have to re-span it, which is uh, kind of a pain. I'm not a big span marker user anyway, but uh, for people who love it, um, yeah, it's just both in Premiere and Avid, if you extract something from the middle in Premiere, that would be a ripple, you know, a ripple delete or, or delete close gap or something like that. Um, you're just gonna have to re, you can, you can pick it up and re-fix it in Premiere. You cannot in Avid. In Avid, once a marker's down, it's down and it's done. And that is just the way of things in Avid. That's markers. Hope you liked markers as much as I loved bringing them to you. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like or subscribe. And if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. Feel free to check my link in the bio or the link underneath if you're watching this on YouTube.